Hello there, it's Pete here again with another dip into the Tim Holtz vault. And I must say, it's always a pleasure. Now, we are looking at one specific set today, and this is the Vault Picture Show. Um, it's an absolutely wonderful set. And this comes about because people have been asking Tim time and time again, when are you bringing back this die? When are you bringing back that die? Why can't I get... So you get the picture. So what Tim's done is he's brought all these super popular dies back. And another set that I love, we're gonna be using elements of this as well, the Vault Watch Gears. This has so many of those wonderful mechanicals, the gears, the numbers, we're gonna be using that a lot today. Not I'm not forgetting about the pocket watch as well, which is the star of the show. So we're going to show you some fun techniques. It's going to be slightly different from some of the other videos we've done. And please go and check out all of those videos on sysx.co.uk, sysx.com, for example. So let's get cracking. So this is the Vault Picture Show. Now, what we're getting in this set is this fantastic picture wheel. Uh, the film strip, this large film strip frame, and of course, all the little windows. So if you want to cut individual little photographs to pop back into these apertures, you can do so. The, Tim really has thought of everything with this. Now, this film strip was originally came off a, um, what we call a decorative strip die, for those of you with a long memory. And this was originally a Biggs. So they've all been resized to fit together perfectly. And these are some of the most popular dies that have been asked for time and time again by makers. Now, let's pop those out of the way because I'm also going to be using some of the elements from this wonderful set, which is the Vault Watch Gears. And you do get your pocket watch. So there's the base. Then you get this to cut an aperture into that to create the face. And you can get shaker domes as well to work with this. So that's a great addition. You're getting all your numbers, you're getting all your gears, you're getting this wonderful number set, which we're gonna be using quite a bit as well for this make. Now let's pop those to one side because let's get into cutting straight away. And I'm gonna bring in my Tim Holtz switch machine. This, of course, is the electronic machine. I've used uh, the fold away in some uh, of my videos. I've also used the sidekick. So it's a question of which one you prefer or the sidekick you can use by the side of either one. So I open the front, press the button, and it's ready to go. Now, let's load this up. I'm going to be using black card. And for the picture wheel, if I wanted to cut that as an aperture in the middle of this card, I could do that, but to get the wheel itself, I'm gonna use this die on the outside. I just have to find out where that sits. That's it, that's perfect. So, to make sure that's not gonna move around, I'll put this towards the bottom. To make sure that's not gonna move around, I'm gonna use some maker's tape. Now this is a Sizzix product. It's a very low tack tape, so if you want to keep your dies in place to ensure they're not gonna move about during the cut. That is the best way to go. Some people use washi tape, but sometimes some washi tape, it's a little bit tacky, so it does raise the surface. Now let's run that through, shall we? So just one pass through the machine. All you need to do with this, once you've made your sandwich, is simply place it into the machine and let the machine do all the work. Now, if you have particularly complex dies that are very detailed, Sometimes you may think, you know what, I want to do a double pass. So simply press this button here, it reverses the direction, and it goes through the machine twice. And there we have it. That's all your die cutting pretty much done for this. So we've got the film strip, we've got that little frame as well, and I'll take this off so the maker's tape does not lift the card at all, it does not affect the texture whatsoever. And finally, our lovely picture wheel. Now, with the film strip, of course, you got these little dots down the side. So, if you ever wondered why people use dye brushes, or why they use dye picks, this is a perfect illustration of the why. Just to pop 
all those little bits out. Now, let's take this, we'll pop this to one side for now. Because I want to bring in, I want to bring in those numbers because I'm going to create a background. I'm going to create a background for my die cuts and I'm going to be using those numbers. So I want to put this, so this is going to be my background and I'm going to place this number die. So all the numbers are on that die like so. So again, we'll pop that through the machine because we're going to talk about the backgrounds as much as the die cuts with this. We're also going to be talking about faux embossed techniques and I'm going to show you a couple of cool things with faux embossing. So that pops out like that. Again, you know what, that die brush that we talked about, that is really going to pay dividends. And let, let me actually, let me grab, let me grab this wonderful little case. This contains all of my Tim Holtz bits and pieces. So there's my, there's my lovely die brush there. And of course, it's constant companion, the die pick. And all of these are Tim Holtz branded. They've got Tim's signature on them like that. Because when you've got a die like this, and there is a foam pad that comes with this as well, which you can use. You simply run it over the top and all those numbers, which we will keep for later, just pop out. Now, any bits which are stubborn, sticking, you simply take your die pick and you pop those out. So it's an essential piece of kit for anybody who's halfway serious about die cutting. And you see if I run that over there, it just takes them out really smooth, really clean. So I'll pop that to one side for a second. Take my machine. Thank you, switch. There. Now, let's have a look. Let's have a look at what we just did because I cut into that like so with the numbers. But if I did that two or three times, I'm gonna get something like this. This is gonna be my background. So it's just a bit of higgledy-piggledy detail, as it were. Now, if I took that one step further, say I cut some of the other numbers, these, these lovely big numbers, which go with that gorgeous pocket watch, I could actually add those to this. And I'll hold this up and I'll twist it. Now, if you can't see where they're added, that's fine, because I've done something with that to show you how cool having that extra depth and dimension is. That is really something else. So not only have I got the aperture cuts, but I've got these die cut numbers on the top. So the ones that popped out, I saved those. And I've used some acrylic just to bring that to the fore to get a kind of a, a faux rust effect. So that's a wonderful way to do your backgrounds. And when we're talking about faux embossing, how about this? These are die cuts. Now, this is from another set. This is from another set in the uh, Vault collection. And this, I've attached die cuts to a piece of card. And it looks to all the world like it's been embossed, but it's not. It's a faux embossed technique. And now, the piece of card that I cut those from is this. And I stuck it onto another piece of black card. And I got a faux deboss with that. So that's a great way of creating backgrounds from die cuts in the way that maybe you might not normally think about doing. So let's pop those off to one side because we're going to be taking our die cuts. And today, rather than using inks, we're going to be applying acrylics. And I'm using my Sizzix Media Mat. So I'll just roll that out like so. It's ready to go. You can see it's got all these wells. So if you want to mix paints, if you want to uh, daub your distress ink on there, pick it up with a water brush, you can then work on here. Now there are no sides to this media mat, so it doesn't impede you in terms of the size of your project. It's good to go. And let's take that. And I cut two. These, these are a couple that I cut some time earlier. So those are all ready to go. And also we want our background because I'm gonna apply some acrylics to this to get different sort of effects. Um, I'll start off 
with some paint. Let's take, let's take a gray. This is a, a really dark zinc gray. Um, whatever brand you use, they all work really, really well. Now, before I can use that, I'm going to open up my set. This is my Sizzix Effects Craft Tool set. This is the effects set. It's one of several. And these sets come to you with a handle. Okay, now you can use different tools on both ends at the same time. But today, I'm going to be putting the end on this and taking my brayer. You can see with this collection, you also get these two wonderful palette knife heads. Really great if you're doing mixed media work with acrylics or paste or anything like that. So let's roll out some of this gray. Now, you can roll that as thin or as thick as you want. I know it's difficult to see over this at the moment, but it is making a big difference. Um, especially if you're going for a kind of an industrial rusty effect. So I'm starting off with that like so. Oh, one of my numbers is stuck in there. I'll just take that out. So there's the gray. That's, that's our base color. Um, and I'm going to put those to one side. The great thing about the media mat is you can just take a wipe. This comes clean away. So there we are. I'm using all of the acrylic that is on here. And that's it. As I say, we're not seeing much at the moment. So let's take our next color. Now I'm, I'm going to introduce this is a sort of a deep kind of oxidized red. This is where I'm going for my kind of rusty finish. And I'm, there's no rhyme or reason behind this. It's completely slapdash, you know, uh, and even after saying all that, you are getting this lovely rust finish. We'll see that closer up in a little while. Now, I'm going to add some more. And the thing about acrylic and tech like, techniques like this, you can always add more. But if you put too much paint down, not only does it waste your paint, but it means that you get too much on your project, which is not pretty, quite frankly. So I can even place that directly and lift that away, which gives me a completely different effect, which is why I do so love this media mat. It's been a bit of a game changer for us over here. Now, there, I'm, going to I'm going to add one more color. I'm going to add one more color because I want to get contrast. If these were all the same color, that would not look cool at all. But if I introduce this, this is, this is a kind of a, a rich cream. It's, it's a buttermilk color. So there we are. If eventually when it does come out, there we have it. So you notice I'm not cleaning up between. Um, yeah, and I wanna, what I want to do with this is just I'm looking for texture rather than flooding this with color. Okay, so I'm taking it gradually. I'm working that in, coming in with a bit more and just building it up. And it really looks worn and industrial, which is, which is the kind of look I'm going for today. So there we are. And as before, let's dip that into the paint directly. And how about that? Now, while we're here, check out some of these. These are some others. We brought some teal into there. Uh, that's a rust. There's some browns going on here then. And here you can see I brought stamping into it as well. That one, we've, we've taken some, some white over the top of there. This one, we've dragged some colors to get a kind of a stain going on. So you can see from this, this wonderful, wonderful dye, there's lots of versatility. It's a great background focus. And if you put some individual photos, maybe some old black and whites or some family photos from, from a beach holiday, it's also great for journaling and scrapbooking, or any kind of paper crafting application you could ever wish to use. Now, we've got a little bit. No, you know what? While I was talking, I let this dry. I didn't want to do that. So we're going to do some more. We're going to add some more. So this time quite thinly. And I'm going to bring that just very, very subtle, very subtle, hardly. So I'm hardly touching them. I'm just sort of almost, almost kissing it, if you will. There, 
that's it. But it's going to make a big difference when these are set against each other. So you see the contrast that you were talking about starting to come to the fore. Now, there is one. There is one that I forgot, and that's my larger photo frame. So I want to bring in some of those, some of those colors again. A little bit of zinc. And then we'll take a little bit. So you see, you can just make this up as you go along. There's no rights or wrongs with these techniques. You just need to be brave. A um, uh, bit of the red going on there. How about getting that gray coming in? You can see I'm blending it together with the bread as I go. And finally, a little bit of that buttermilk. Just over the top like that. that that's, that's where I want this. So if we put that against the black, you can see that's quite a difference. You can't really see it there. But if you put it back against that black, you'll notice the difference with all of these. And they all started off as black card. Now, one little thing I want to do as well. Do you use white ink pads? Because in my experience, they're not that great. So what I like to do, if I want to add stamping detail to something like this, and I'm going to take this little stamp. It says best day ever. This is one of Tim's stamps. I'm going to stamp onto that frame like that. That gives me, and it's more for effect than anything, but that's just what I want. It looks industrial. So again, I'll roll that out. I'll take another stamp. I'll just press it in. So I'm not even using a stamp platform or, a, or an acrylic block because I'm going for an effect. I want the imperfection to come out in the work. That's exactly where I'm going. Now all I need to do is take these and wash them off and scrub them so they're good to use again. And there. Now, we're on our way. That's it now. Let's take a look at this mat. It needs a bit of a clean. But all you need to do is take a wipe over the top like that, even where it's dried and just lift that up. You can see it's making a kind of a gloopy mess, but once, once you've got it to this stage, then you just take some kitchen paper or some sort of paper towel and just wipe that away. It's, it's wonderful for blending acrylics, for watercolors, for any kind of, of ink or medium, or even if you're mixing sort of texture paste with acrylics to get a different effect. It's perfect. So there we are. That'll bring that up lovely. And um, you know, whether you're using a wipe or a damp towel, this will come up perfect every single time. Let's come back in with that wipe, shall we? To get it pristine. Even if I left this, even if I took it back up to the studio and left it for a couple of days and come back in, it would still clean up. And that's the beauty of having a silicon mat like this. It's a great work area. So there we are. And that's ready to go for the next time. So we'll fold that away, pop it off to one side, and we'll bring in my elements because we're going to want to build a card with this. And remember, oh, remember those numbers from earlier? Remember? Remember when I did this with the, with the lovely numbers down the side, the actual, the strip of card that I cut the numbers from, you can see I've, I've applied some acrylics to that. So what would normally be waste is now a wonderful element which you can attach. So we could put that down the side of that, for example, or, or, or even, you know, getting a nice bit of contrast texture, really, really cool. But I'm going to put those to one side and take my film strip because a film strip without a photo, well, it kind of doesn't make sense, does it? So let's go into this. I'm going to be applying a little bit of PVA around the edge like so. And then I'll take my chosen photograph and pop that in place. And there we are. And that, that's my daughter there. That's the, that's the light of my life. Bless her. So we're ready to go now. 
we shall take a card which has, remember that stamp I used earlier? Same stamp, I just used some gray down the side. And I'm gonna start off by attaching this. I start off with the biggest elements and then add the others as I go along. Now I'm gonna staple that because, well, everything's gonna go over the top. And I think I'll take, take this one like so. And again, bring a stapler in. You could use PVA, you could use a hot glue gun, you can use whatever you prefer. Now, the picture wheel. I wanna put that somewhere there. Now you could even, you could even stamp onto this picture wheel as well. You could take that die from earlier and do that. Then now, what have we got? We've got another film strip, so I'm going to want that kind of, kind of coming down at that angle. Again, there are no rights and wrongs. Am I making it up as I go along? Yes, quite frankly, I am. And then finally, finally, I'm going to take this and place that on there. And I'm going to reach down and get some 3D foam. This is where I want it to have a little bit of dimension. I want it popping out from the card. So this is the Sizzix foam tape. I'll cut some of that off with my scissors. And there, we're good to go. Then this is another way where the die pick comes in handy. If you've got double-sided tape or foam pads like this, or even the little foam pads, for picking those off, it's absolutely great. So, we'll pop that in place. Now, because my daughter is truly one of a kind, both literally and metaphorically, I've stamped onto a piece of card to say just that. Um, this, this set, what can I say about it? It's absolutely fantastic. And let's show you some other examples that I've made using some of the elements from there. That one again, we've, we've gone with a really kind of industrial background there. You can see there's a vintage photo that's from one of Tim's uh, sets as well. We've got the film strip. So it's the similar kind of elements, completely different composition than here. Now, these are from another set in the vault. Go and watch Tim's video and find out about the other sets. They're absolutely great. But see, having that picture wheel under there, it, it's just, oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful element to add in. Now remember the gears, remember the gears from our Vault Watch set. Vault, or Vault Watch gears, I should say. Those are the gears, the numbers in the background, creating that background texture, that faux emboss that we talked about. Also, we've got some of the flowers and the butterfly from our, um, our vintage set, which again is part of this collection. And last but not least, the piece de resistance, as they say in France. Um, we've got the flowers. So we've, we've got industrial alongside, um, you know, kind of like natural things. We've got this lovely globe that is from another set again for in this vault collection. So wherever you want to take this set, it gives you so much creative scope. It really does. Um, and I've just used these kind of, I've used them with some other sets from the collection. I've used them by themselves independently. I've brought all sorts of features into there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the beauty of the Tim Holtz Vault Collection. Well, there we have it. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. It's a lot of fun. There's so many different styles. There's so many different techniques that you can use with these wonderful, wonderful die sets from Tim Holtz. But if you want to know more about these die sets, you really need to go to timholtz.com or go to sizzix.co.uk or sizzix.com to find out what Tim says about them. Find out why Tim loves these sets and why you love these vault dies so much. That is the best place to go. He can tell you in so much more detail than I ever could. And of course, you've got the added bonus of seeing some of the wonderful makes from Tim's making team. So I've been Pete. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon.